discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage us children to be excellent. Wamune. Congo University, a private chartered university that offers world-class education at all levels, including certificates, diplomas, bachelor's and master's degrees. Our courses include computing and IT, law, journalism, nursing, business administration, education, fashion and design, and many more. Admissions for the August 2020 intake are still open. Will you join us? Kutelevu, mkuwa nilizanyo kwa BBS Telefina, iyo waka waka wa Uganda. Muzukuru wa mgema katumba jiradi, anze mkupu zako mkasera kano kenyini. Atugenda musomera mudiro liyo, zuksa habana, muizi muzukse, kwa te echitabo, je mudiro, atandiko kubanga ataya gina mkirazi, asoma. Senior 6, betugenda kwa physics, umusomesa ya tuuseda, betugenda kubanga tutambula. Sumera mudiro liyo, e, kutusi wako wa nafaba Green Hill Schools, ama sumero agwa murembe, ujo ino kubanga utuwalu umu, umu, umuana, abiringa afuna ate ebisera, evi umumaso, evi runji dala. Ate neva nafaba Maryland High School, wa gasangu wa Entebbe, na bo batuteka mu ensimbi batambula na fe, musumera mudiro liyo, kuteka na, na fe, aba big. A peni eyo mulembe jo ino kuguli lomu wana wo Na ujo ino kubango wako isa mu office Emili mjitambule bulu unji nyo dala Ne mkumba university e University e gendo kuwe chocho ya gala Obiru mtu wawo mgaso ira ya ya nirua Pukatali akinsiyo Nebu tutambula Awano msumera mudiro liyo Nolecho guwa mzade mkasera kano zukso Mwana uwa sini yeyo mkaga Physics gwe tugenda ko mkasera kano kenyini Kale kama kutuali uwa msumesa E tugende mkiras Thank you uh, Moderator uh, good morning students, good morning parents, good morning Ugandans. Once again, I am here for us to proceed from where we stopped. I want to welcome you to yet this lesson. To the students that are watching um, the lesson and the following, I want to remind you and welcome you back to our continuation. We shall be continuing with our topic on waves, and um, as I usually do, I know you are not able to respond to the questions, but I want to pose a few questions. We looked at the terms that are very common uh, in exam. Terms like define amplitude, define wavelength, define phase, define uh, speed, define frequency, define velocity. Uh, you can also be asked to write down the wave equation. Uh, they could even go ahead to ask you to write the wave equation for a wave traveling from left to right or right to left. I want you to ask yourself at this particular time, pause and see whether you actually can define Three of the mentioned terms. Pause and ask yourself whether you can define three of the mentioned terms. If you can, then we are at the right footing. Um, I want you to look at that curve. I want uh, us to remind ourselves about what we looked at at the end. And then we shall proceed to capture a little more work. When you look at that curve that they are showing you, we derived the wave equation... We looked at the phase angle. I will simply pick the phase difference phi as 2 pi out of lambda times the displacement x. Um, we looked at the equation for the wave moving from left to right as A, the sine of omega t minus phi. But if phi is equal to 2 pi out of lambda, we were able to come up with this equation as omega t minus 2 pi out of lambda x. <clears throat> we are already aware that our omega is actually equal to 2 pi f. And we are also aware that our f is 1 out of t. Um, 
if I substitute in for omega here, my y gives us a uh, s sine 2 pi t, um, 2 pi, okay, 2 pi, yeah, 2 pi is omega, 2 pi ft minus 2 pi out of lambda x. If I factor out 2 pi, our y becomes the sign of 2 pi factored out into ft minus uh, 1 out of lambda x. And uh, if I choose to substitute for frequency using this, my y will be a sine of 2 pi into, uh, if I substitute for 1 out of, uh, for f, it will be 1 out of t, t minus 1 out of lambda x. Um, this equation is key. This one is key. This one is also key. We need to know all of them uh, in those different states. But again, if I choose, uh, if I choose to substitute in uh, at this stage for frequency, we have frequency from um, the speed and the wavelength. Frequency will be equal to speed over the wavelength. So at this stage, we can choose to substitute in frequency as V over lambda. Uh, remember, I also told you that if V is F lambda, um, I also told you that we can still say that V is lambda out of period. And I told you, this is actually very rarely used by most teachers because we know that f is 1 out of t, this is also true. So at this stage, I can choose to substitute for f as that, and I will still get a, the sign of 2 pi. Um, where I have f, I can put v out of lambda times t minus 1 out of lambda x. That means that if I picked out that, I could still have this as a valid expression out of lambda into vt minus x. These equations starting from here to here to here to here are all referring to the same expression but could be used depending on the way the question is asked. We had looked at that expression, but we did not have enough time to expose it to those degrees of understanding. I want to urge my candidates following to take note of that. You can actually uh, copy down that. I want also to emphasize that the value of k uh, sometimes we use k here. We use k here. If we use k as 2 pi out of lambda, then we can still write this as y being equal to a sine of 2 pi. 2 pi, uh, if I use it at this stage, uh, that means if I entered this there, uh, I would have that. So if I use it at this stage, I will have 2 pi um, ft minus k x. If I'm bringing in the k, then this expression must be brought at this stage. That this term here, which we have called uh, partly the coefficient of x on the phase difference, can be replaced by k, and would have that equation as sine um, 2 pi um, ft minus k x. Um, in that case, our k would actually be equal to 2 pi out of lambda, as you notice, and that is the wave factor or the wave number. Um, I expect that if you are capturing anything, you have already captured this, so I will remove this part as you slowly capture the other part, and we continue to proceed with our lesson. 
Um, from that point, we can go back and say generally. We can say generally for a wave <coughs> moving from left to right, uh, the equation we use is the common equation. Uh, we have looked at all the various ways of writing this equation. I can now write it as A, the sign of omega t minus kx. We now know what k is. <clears throat> and for a wave moving from right to left, Uh, y will, uh, will be A, the sign of omega t plus kx. When it is moving the normal way, or what is very common to most of uh, the students in physics or the teachers, it has a minus here. When it is moving from right to the left, it reaches point P first, and we usually say that it uh, vibrates um, uh, and arrives at P before point O, and therefore it would lead the one at O by that phase difference. That's why we use the positive. After generating these equations, I also want to emphasize before we look at one or two examples, the other time we looked at just one example, I want to add on one unique example among those that I asked you to try out, <clears throat> and then we shall proceed to the next part. Um, I want to emphasize that when you are given a question on waves, the equation can actually be brought and written as this sign and would say kx minus omega t. The equation can be written like this. This is none uh, compared to none of these two. <clears throat> but I want to inform my candidates watching that if the wave is given written in this format, say they give you an equation, I will, I will request uh, the producer to go to questions. Uh, the second question it should be on um, uh, question number two. The equation is given as um, 2, the sign of 2 pi um, into 0 0.25x minus 100t. Um, you can move further down, the producer should move further down, to questions. Where are there questions? Where are there questions? The question number two. Yes, that very one. Uh, my dear students, you are seeing that question. That question, if you compare it with the question immediately below, that number three, if you compare it with the number three, you will notice that this one, brings the x, the term in the x first. Yet we are saying the general equation must be written like this, with the omega t before the kx. Now, if you are given a number like this, uh, my dear candidates, you simply need to express the general wave equation in that format. You simply need to express the general wave equation in the format I'm showing you here. And the work here actually requires you to compare. Much as the question at hand is asking us to calculate the wavelength and the speed, I am going to go a little beyond and extract spare frequency, extract period, and the rest. Uh, if we look at this question, first of all, um, we notice that by, compa by comparing the two, that the two is in the position of A. The other important thing you should not leave behind is that they will always mention the unit they are considering in that equation. For example, here they are telling you that y 
uh, and time are in centimeters and seconds respectively as you can see. That implies that our amplitude, if it was required, is supposed to be written as two centimeters. But if we are going to use it further, which may not be the case, then we consider it uh, converted to SI units. <clears throat> uh, they want us to find the wavelength. And we are aware that if I pulled out this factor and I multiply it by this, um, this 2 pi times a quarter, this 2 pi times 1 out of 4, 1 out of 4 is equivalent to 0 0.25, is exactly equivalent to the k in this case, but the k is equal to 2 pi out of lambda if uh, we remember uh, what I talked about just before I rubbed off. Now, if the k is equal to this, it implies that at this stage, our pi out of 2 is actually equal to 2 pi out of lambda. And therefore, if pi is cancelled, then we can get our lambda here as 1 uh, centimeter. Our lambda can be obtained as 1 centimeter, which you can convert to meters. This is our wavelength. But they are asking us to determine um, the speed as well. They are asking us to determine the speed as well. Now, if we are asked to determine the speed, uh, it implies that as we determine the speed, uh, we will be able to get, as we determine the speed, we know that speed is given by F lambda. So we need to find the frequency. We need to find the frequency. How do we find the frequency? We will go to the other part that has pi, uh, that has time. If we look at this part and we compare it with this part and we know that from the expression of omega, which is equivalent to 2 pi f, or omega t is equal to 2 pi f t, the t cancels out, implying that our omega is 2 pi f. But we are aware that our omega is 2 pi out of the period. Our omega is 2 pi out of the period. So if we have uh, omega t is equal to 2 pi f, it implies that this 100 t is omega t. And therefore, if our interest is to find frequency, we will simply say that 100 is equal to 2 pi f. <clears throat> now, this 100 must have the 2 pi picked there. So we will have uh, um, 2 pi times 100 being equal to, to 2 pi f. And of course, the 2 pi will cancel, and you'll get your frequency as 100 has. After getting the frequency as 100 has, then we can go ahead to find the speed here as 100 times the wavelength, uh, which is 1 out of 100, and which would give you the speed as 1 meter per second, if the equation is indicated as we have captured there. Um, we can look at question 3 before uh, we, we leave the rest of the work for us to compare with the answers. Those who worked through those numbers can now confirm whether you actually got them right. <coughs> um, yes, we started by looking at uh, this uh, to find the wavelength. We got that. Now we can proceed and look at question three. <coughs> I think you have taken note of this from left to right. The equation has a minus. From right to left, the equation has a plus. It's the same expression, but expressed with a change in sign. And that is very important, as we shall shortly see, actually, when we go to the principle of superposition. Equation three, or question three says, why? is equivalent to A, I will use capital A, 
uh, much as here we are using tomorrow, eh? Okay, let me say, eh? The sine of 100 pi minus uh, pi x out of 15. The sine of 100 pi minus pi x out of 15. There should be a t there. I will request the students to add a t here. On your question, ensure you add a t there. One, they are telling us to find the wavelength. Two, they are asking us to find the frequency. And three, they are asking us to find the period. Find the wavelength, the frequency, and the period. By comparison, I said, if we compare this with a general wave equation where we are saying it is A, the sign of, um, I can say 2 pi Ft, uh, 2 pi F is for omega, minus, minus 2 pi out of lambda x. If we compare it directly there, then if we want wavelength, we shall look at the coefficient of x, that pi, pi out of 15 will be compared with the 2 pi out of lambda. And uh, if this pi cancels out, and our intention is to get lambda, our lambda will be equal to 30. But what are they saying? Here we shall assume that they are actually saying that the wave is in meters. Here I did not complete the whole question, but assuming that we are in meters, then the wavelength can be looked at as 30 meters. To find the frequency, we compare this part with that part. Ideally, this is a number that every candidate should be able to pass, and it is a prominent question, as you may be aware. To find the frequency, we look at 2 pi f, 2 pi f is the coefficient of t and should be compared with the coefficient of t in the question, which is 100 pi. Because the t cancels, the pi will cancel, and the frequency will be 100 divided by 2, which will give us 50 hertz. And then they are asking us to find the period. Of course, period is related to frequency by an expression, which I think the candidates are now well aware of, that the period F, uh, T, is 1 out of F, and therefore it will simply be 1 out of 50, and the units should be SI units of time. They should be seconds. Uh, dear candidates, um, I will as I did last time, request that you try out numbers four and five. Four and five. Number six, we are coming for it uh, shortly um, after introducing our next concept. Our next concept, I was still catching up with unfinished work of our last lesson. Uh, today, I want us to focus on a new principle <clears throat> that will allow us to be able to generate the equation for a stationary wave. We shall call it the principle of superposition. The principle of super position. <clears throat> you can put a question that says state the principle of superposition. State the principle of superposition. I want <clears throat> you to keep focused on that question six, uh, we are shortly going to do it after stating this principle and uh, uh, doing a small introduction. State the principle of superposition. 
<clears throat> the principle of superposition, uh, my dear candidates, states that the resultant displacement of, at any point is the algebraic sum of the separate displacements due to the two waves. It states that the resultant displacement at any point is the algebraic sum of the separate displacements due to the two waves. The result and displacement at any point is the sum of the separate displacements of the two waves. Is the sum. Some people may say the algebraic sum of the separate displacements um, of the two waves. Now, um, when we look at the principle of superposition, again, we will be reminded, just for the purposes of reminding ourselves, uh, when we are dealing with waves, we call this a crest, and we call this a trough. That is for a progressive wave. We are saying when two crests join, okay, this would be like interference. That if I have a wave uh, that is moving in that, part, in that format, let me just consider that, and I add it with another wave um, moving with that, the resulting wave is expected to have a greater amplitude than either of the two. So the amplitude increases. But <clears throat> if I have any interference, that would be constructive interference. If I have a wave moving like that, and I add it with another wave, this is moving like that, but I add it with another wave moving like that. And moreover, in the opposite direction, the resultant wave would be a flat, a flat one. This is a destructive interference. Now, when we look at the principle of superposition, it actually lands us to what we are going to call stationary waves. Stationary waves can also be looked at as standing waves. And they have characteristics. <clears throat> the characteristics will actually help us to eventually uh, generate an expression. But it is a common question they can ask you to state the characteristics of stationary waves. One of them is that they have the same amplitude. I'm not going to repeat these ones here. They have the same amplitude. They have the same frequency. Um, that means that we can also say they have the same wavelength and they travel in opposite directions. So what is a stationary wave in brief? We can say a stationary wave is a progressive wave that is formed. A stationary wave is a wave that is formed when two, when two waves are traveling in opposite direction towards each other, but with the same amplitude, same wavelength, same frequency, and same speed. Then we obtain what we call a standing wave. And we have said that when two crests join, then we have an increased amplitude. And when a crest joins with a trough, we actually have a zero amplitude. If a crest joins with a trough, if this crest is pushed back here, uh, what we obtain here will be similar to, to this. And we shall define these points 
we shall define points like um, nodes and land nodes. So I have stated the principle of superposition. I have answered what a stationary wave is, but uh, in the spirit of capturing, I need to write the sentence here. We stated the principle of superposition and we're saying that the stationary wave uh, actually is produced uh, from the principle of superposition. That if two progressive waves join, they are with the um, same amplitude, same frequency, same speed, and traveling in opposite directions, then we obtain a stationary wave. We can say that this is a wave obtained when two progressive waves traveling two progressive waves <coughs> of the same amplitude comma, frequency and the speed um, traveling in opposite directions. It is a wave obtained when two progressive waves of the same amplitude, frequency, and speed are traveling in opposite directions. When they meet, we obtain what we are calling a progressive wave. We obtain what we are calling a progressive wave. Now, the progressive wave is given by an expression. And um, if I may put a simple sketch here, if one wave is this one, assuming it stops there, if we get another wave, um, I would draw it coming from there so that I don't actually break the rules of the definition, but I could have drawn it from this side. But a student who is watching may say, but he's saying coming from opposite direction. Assuming this is going there and this is coming here, when they meet, what they form is a stationary wave. A stationary wave is a wave that is static. Stationary means static or not moving. Now it is characterized by these points. The points where the two waves meet will be referred to as Nodes. These are nodes. We normally denote them with letter N. And the maximum or the middle points here, which we will uh, choose to put at that stage, or we can put them here, are called ant nodes. I will define these um, two important terms here immediately. What are nodes? As you notice from here, nodes can be defined as points of zero displacement. Um, these are points on the wave of zero displacement. In other words, the displacement there is zero, and that nodes are points are points of maximum displacement of a wave. I will move straight to the wave equation. To the wave equation. Uh, we have said there are two waves. This one, which is starting from zero, um, is compared to a sine curve. If I called it one, I would write it as A, the sine of omega t minus kx. It is moving from left to right, as I said. If we compare this one, it is moving from right to left, and we said we simply need to negate the sign in the previous one. 
I am attempting now to answer question 6, part 3, if you can see it. We already know how to define amplitude. We already uh, have the capacity to state at least two characteristics of a stationary wave, but we can state more than two. And they are saying a progressive wave <coughs> of this equation is reflected at a barrier. If it is refracted, the refracted wave will move in the opposite direction, if you know the concept of refraction. If this one hits here, it is reflected going back. And what results is what we are calling a stationary wave. And they are saying, can we um, show that the resultant wave is stationary? <coughs> I have those two expressions. Actually, to get the resultant wave uh, now takes us into the mathematics of trigonometry. And uh, I will try to be a little uh, faster here because I didn't want us to stop here. So the resultant, which we all know, we have said when the two meet, and that means when they meet, they join. When they join, we add them up. And if we add them up, we have the resultant wave as A, the sine of omega t minus kx, plus A, the sine of omega t plus kx. Now, this is what is supposed to give us uh, a stationary wave. Uh, for purposes of uh, making sure that my students understand, I will factor out the A. Let me do it like this. I will let omega t minus kx be A, and omega t plus kx, call it B. So my Y will become a new expression, which I can write as A, into the sign of A plus the sign of B. I am not going to go deep into the mathematics, but if I have two signs, A minus B, um, maybe A plus B, yes, and uh, A minus B, as you notice, this is like A minus, A plus. I can compare them with these ones. If we open brackets, just an expansion of this, um, since I'm teaching physics students, whom I am assuming are mathematics students, I'll go straight away. When I expand uh, this one, it will be the same as expanding this. So since I don't have enough time to go into the details, I will simply show you that if I have signed into a minus B, for those who do not know, it is expanded to be A sine A sine A cos B. If it's a minus, you maintain the minus and you begin with, you interchange, cos A sine B. If I have sine into A plus B, I'll have sine A cos B, but this stays as a plus into cos A sine B. Uh, I want to bring to your attention that this is the same as the minus. If I let the omega t be A and kx be B, I'm talking about this expression. So whatever I'm going through here, eventually I will let it uh, be uh, applied on this general expression. If I add them up, if I choose to add these two, it's like I'm adding this term and this term. Um, with an exception of my A, which I'll have pulled out. So it implies that if I add them up here, I have sine into A minus B plus sine into A plus uh, B on the left-hand side. But here I don't know whether you are all able to see that this term is going to become zero, this one, if I'm adding. This is a negative, and this is cosine, cosine. It's like minus one plus one. So I'll get this one adding up, it's also the same. It's like AB plus AB. So it becomes twice sine of A cos of B. And that implies that if I apply it here, I'll have my A into um, sine. If I open it up, it will be sine of omega t cos of kx uh, minus 
sine of omega t uh, cos cos of omega t sine of kx plus the repeat of this um, which is sine of omega t cos of kx I'll just put it here uh, plus um, cos of omega t sine of kx so this one will cancel out and I'll stay with these two implying that our y which we are looking for will be a into this plus this which is 2 sine omega t cos kx so generally y is 2a sine omega t cos k x is the stationary wave equation is the stationary wave equation and if if we recall i want us to recall recall that at the start of this topic we saw that y was equal to a sin omega t as a general equation so if i consider that as correct <clears throat> then i would look at the whole of this 2a cos x that if this y is meant to look like this then um, assuming that i may be called this small a then i will have my y as as a 2a cos kx times sine of omega t implying that this component i am calling small a now for my case is the same as 2a cos of kx but remember our k is what two pi out of lambda so it means that our amplitude the whole of this is actually our amplitude um, i have because i have used capital a i'm forced to use this it means that the two a cos of kx is actually our amplitude in that case and therefore um, um, the a that amplitude is two a cos of kx and uh, we have said that since the k is um, 2 pi out of lambda we are saying that a is 2a cos of 2 pi out of lambda x but ideally this is the equation for a stationary wave i have already emphasized that with a stationary wave we have points that we call nodes and anti nodes and we can emphasize these points from there that it follows that at amplitude is a maximum and equal to 2a in this case if we want to find the amplitude uh, this expression the amplitude in our general expression is a so in this expression our amplitude our amplitude which we know as small a which is the whole of this a is going to be maximum when we say it is 2a times 1 and it will be times 1 if this component is equal to 1 if the cos of 2 pi out of lambda x is equal to 1 so if the cos of that is equal to 1 we are interested in finding what value of x will make this zero what value of x will make this because the cos of zero is the one that gives us 1 so the value of x that makes uh, makes that uh, give us one uh, give us a actually it is a is supposed to be either zero because when x is zero here then it implies that the cos of that term is zero when x is zero we have that when x is zero when x is um, uh, lambda out of 2 uh, etc it implies that uh, we shall always have the cos of 2 pi out of lambda x as 0 as 1 and therefore in that case we shall always have our amplitude as 2a uh, there and when it is 2a it means it is giving us a point 
that we have referred to as an ant node. It is giving us a maximum point here, which we have called point A. And when we look at values that make it, um, make it one, <coughs> when we look at values that make it, uh, we are saying that it follows that the amplitude is maximum and equal to 2A when those points are there. And these points are points we have called antinodes. And by um, looking at that, if we are to sketch the wave pattern, then we relate it with a distance. If I look at this, I'll have uh, this moving up to there and this moving up to there. If I compare this length here <coughs> with uh, this length on a mile curve, we shall discover that if this is lambda, then half of it is lambda half. Then quarter of it would be a quarter, this one. If we look at this, this is assumed to be the amplitude point. So this is simply a quarter of lambda, and this is another quarter of lambda. But the points they are giving us here are amplitudes here. These points are amplitudes, and this will be a node. Now, when we look at that arrangement, um, a quarter plus a quarter will give us a half. That means if we are looking at this as a length, it will be a half of lambda. Then our uh, points that would give us zero displacement, when we look at this expression again, for the amplitude to be zero, for the whole of this to give us zero, then we need to look at kx or 2 pi out of lambda. So the values of x that will be responsible to give us zero um, will be values that can give us, for example, the cos of um, when we put in lambda as a quarter. If x is a quarter lambda, it implies that the cos of 2 pi out of lambda times a quarter, times lambda out of 4, would give us the cos of uh, pi out of 2. And this is the cos of 90 degrees. And the cos of 90 degrees is 0. So values of x like quarter lambda, 3 quarters lambda, um, and 5 quarters of lambda will give us an amplitude which is 0. And that will now give us the points we are calling nodes. It will give us the points that in our definition we called nodes. Uh, we can conclude and say that with a stationary wave, there is actually no flow of energy. If you remember, I've told you stationary means standing or static within the medium. But there is energy of motion between each vibrating segment, and that energy is not transferred across uh, the points we have called nodes. A common question which I already gave you here is when they ask you to distinguish between a progressive wave and the stationary wave. There are several differences. Progressive, we said it is a, a wave that is in motion, and therefore it transfers energy from one point to another, and the stationary wave will not be able to transfer energy. Now, this brings me to what we can call fundamental frequency. If we had a string, as we come uh, towards the end of our lesson, we will appreciate we started a little late uh, than our normal time. So I hope we shall have a few, uh, few minutes to at least deliberate on the first uh, part. Um, if the string is plucked in the middle, if I have a string here and it is fixed at two points, those of you who know how to play stringed instruments like a guitar, if you plucked it in the middle, pull it down or up, it would form that. Of course, if you pull it up, that is the real. This one will be an imaginary uh, 
wave. Now, if we have looked at this physics, uh, we say this is a wavelength, this is half the wavelength. If we look at that, uh, this length will be equivalent to a half of the cycle. And we already know the wave equation that V is equal to F lambda. The frequency that will be formed here, the frequency that will be formed will be given by V out of lambda. And if we look at, if we look at the lambda here from L is equal to lambda half, it implies that the lambda will be equal to 2L. And therefore, the frequency, ideally, which now I'm going to denote as F0, will be V out of 2L. And uh, this frequency has a special name. It is the lowest possible frequency that we shall call the fundamental frequency. It is the fundamental frequency. The note, therefore, that that string will produce is called a fundamental note, otherwise referred to as the first harmonic, and its expression will be given by this. As we wind up, this is the expression for the first harmonic, and uh, as you proceed, we'll, you would be able to look at, if it is pressed a little more, it would go to that phase, and you would need to compare this length in terms of wavelength and be able to come up with what we call the first overtone. I hope that we shall be able to progress from there in our next lesson, but importantly, they can ask you to define the fundamental frequency, and we have said it is the lowest possible frequency, and here you are also expected to look at factors that actually affect the frequency in stringed instruments. These factors, we will look at them, but they will, they will come from the expression of velocity, where we look at tension and mass per unit length. I want to wish you a good weekend and wish you nice, silent Easter celebrations as you are aware. But I want to thank the president and the ministry and ask you to continue sanitizing. Stay at home. Let us fight this challenge. Together, I wish you a good day. God bless you. That way, Anzege, which to Tambu Dene Physics, senior Ayomukaga, of Ewa Mazdaka Kuru Dennis, King's College of Udo, Chienka Kasanti, Muizo of Nye Munyo, Tena Dalaku Ku Topiken, Java de Aksomesa. To get a Kuanga Tetu Yongedayo, Nomsomeso Mulala, Nayemu to kids at Virenga, to Soka Kumulam Katono, and your Tuagalo Kubazavana Fabak, Maryland High School, about to Tambula Musomera Mudirio, Sumerio, Lisangwali, and Tebe, Lia Ode Erevo, about Sumesa Arts and Sciences, Balinev Sulo, Ibiola Navalenzi, Balinevironment, Nunji Dala, is always so easy, Oksomo Burunji, Bainala Lab, is always so easy, our sciences, Oksomo Burunji, and Gabuchasuma, Atera, at Column Practicals. Abanye uh, nebiye mizanyo wa vitu nulira nyo na uwecho mwana ongo mwaga zivisele vionje vyo maso Maryland High School in Tebe Eye uh, sumero jobo mtuwala atena ama sumero aga Green Hill Academy Schools Na gowe gali aga primary na goma sumero malunji nyo Mwana umutandi seno musinji wa mungumu dala Abiringa uh, ata uh, abane vivisele vyo maso evirunji uh, dala Bana faba biki na vutu tambula na vo peni eyo mulembe nyo uh, Joi no gulira abana bonga bada yoku masumero um, Chisera chino tuli ndira tulabechi chechi na haba au uh, Wababili mwonsambu wa masumero Bana haba baga gude nga uh, te wakulu uh, vatu suviza Neba neyo na une baga gulira Mwobango zaya haba na kumasumero gulira a penny ea biki Atena wa wa office wa wako zisa penny ea visera vyo na Gula penny ea biki ya tegenda kubanga ate e kuliwayo Bana faba mkumba university na botu tambula na bo uh, Baba tambula na fe masumero mudiro liyo anuru uh, echo Kwa anonya ate omwa ango uotu walo mwana uku university, mtende romu la lugwa university, mtu wale kumkumba university, aje kupanga afuna omusinji, omuru nji dala. Tugena kupanga tuumulamu, ate mwangu dala, tugena kwe yungwa kumusome suumulala, tuverenga tuwe yungere yo tovao, sumera mdero liyo.
Somera Mudirolio, Ngewa Gidua, Maryland High School, Elisangi Wentebe, Somero Yabawala Nabalenzi, Dusomesa Arts and Sciences, Okubile Dela Kusini Yesoka, Okutukile Dela Kusini Yomukaga, Ngali Sangi Wa Mchifechi Wewe Povurunje, Tuline Bisule Yomulembe, Science Laboratory, Sakoni Computer Lab, Wamune. She gives you her number, but your pen didn't work, and the bus is gone. Get a pen you can rely on. Big Crystal, the long-lasting pen with perfect ink flow. Wamune. Green Hill Academy has high standards of learning and the teachers are very good. They give you a sense of belonging. Green Hill has helped me to discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage us children to be excellent. Wamune. Kumbu University. A private chartered university that offers world-class education at all levels, including certificates, diplomas, bachelor's and master's degrees. Our courses include computing and IT, law, journalism, nursing, business administration, education, fashion and design, and many more. Admissions for the August 2020 intake are still open. Will you join us?